Can you tell us, you know, you know, briefly why you decided to go it alone and, and walk us through it a little bit, through, sure. for, you know, how, how it works. Well, I used to run this site called SonicNet, uh, which was an independent music site, and we built our own platform in the 90s because it was the best way to get what we needed. And then we merged with MTV.com and all the international MTV sites. SonicNet ended up providing the platform that powered 18 different websites around the world. So my experience is if you've got a good platform, you can share it between a lot of different sites. And that's what we're trying to do with Diversion. Uh, my co-founder, Tatum Laid, was the head of engineering at a site called iFilm. So one of the biggest viral video sites on the internet and uh, probably one of the video, biggest video sites of any kind uh, in its day. And so he's got a lot of experience in developing kind of scalable video architecture. So we looked at a bunch of providers. We liked Brightcove. We liked the platform.com. We liked a couple others. But ultimately, we decided that we had the resources and the experience to build our own platform. So we have a great developer team. We're writing it in Ruby on Rails, which I think most of built in Ruby also. Uh, which we found to be an excellent uh, programming environment and has allowed us to do a lot of things pretty fast. And so we've taken, for example, the same platform that we built to publish Travelistic and we've reused almost all of that to publish Snow Vision. Now we add some custom components. In Travelistic, we integrated Google Maps everywhere because it's travel, so maps were really important. For Snow Vision, we have weather data, so we have some feeds of, uh, that we're ingesting of you know, snow conditions at 350 mountain resorts. But as we go on and do other channels, we'll keep adding to that shared platform. Hopefully that lets us make a more customized user experience for each vertical. But tell us, okay, so tell us a little bit from the technical standpoint about the uh, encoding and the uploading and the sort of right. distribution. Talk us through so, a little bit. So there's one piece which is what we call ingesting the video. So there we're using a codec from on two. We looked at a bunch of different codecs. We like that the best. Uh, that's for Flash. So whether we upload video ourselves or a user uploads it, it gets processed by the on two codec and turned into Flash. And then we have our own sort of servers to do content management. So it's effectively a video publishing system that track, we input metadata that goes along with the videos. In the case of Travelistic, we associate a latitude and longitude pair with each video, for example, so that we can locate them all on a map, uh, Google Map or any other mapping system that we chose to plug in. Other stuff, you know, typical metadata stuff like author and you know, publisher and length and duration and format. And we use a tagging system, an uh, internally generated tagging system. Um, so then we've, we take the actual video files and we store them on Amazon's uh, S3 service. So this is a little bit of like a trade secret, but I'm so excited about it, I don't mind telling you. You know, basically Amazon is like our CDN. So instead of using a vital stream uh, or a limelight or an Akamai, we use Amazon to actually store the bits. So when a user comes to our site, it's our own servers that figure out what kind of content to deliver them, that do the personalization, the community features, present all the metadata around the video, and also decide which ads to insert. So we go out and do calls to different ad networks. And then the actual files, the flash files, get sent from Amazon. It's amazing. And how do you, what is the arrangement with Amazon? How does that work? It's just, it, the, I think that the S3 acronym stands for Simple Storage Solution. And uh, I don't deal with it directly, but my understanding is it's insanely simple. And the They've really made it super easy to use, and I think a lot of startups are starting to use it. I will say that I think we probably could get a little higher uh, quality of service if we did use like a Limelight. You know? So we're, we have a little bit of a trade-off, and that sometimes it will take a little time to initiate. But the actual quality of the file we're delivering is very high. Um, we benchmarked ourselves against YouTube. We encode at a little higher bit rate, the frame size a little bigger, and we actually have gotten lots of compliments on the quality of our video on Travelistic, which is great. For Snow Vision, we're actually going up again in file quality because this is a very broadband-centric world, very technologically savvy. So we have an even bigger frame size and you know, even more bits that we're pushing out. With higher quality videos that are you know, part of travel and snowboarding, uh, are you considering distributing downloadable videos 
And yeah. what are your thoughts about that? So the map, which is you know kind of our flagship original series that I talked about on Travelistic, is available as a podcast. So that's you can subscribe to it and get it through iTunes, just like any other podcast. And I think over time we will probably offer a lot more content on Travelistic for download. Uh, I personally like to download a queue, so I like to have a playlist and set it to download in the background. I think that is going to be a powerful application for travel. You could be downloading, you know, if you're flying to Jamaica, you could download 50, 60 minutes worth of video and then watch them on your iPod or your laptop on the flight itself and really get a feel for the place that you're going to. Uh, with Snow Vision, we're going to have almost all of the videos available for download right off the bat. So yeah, we're, we definitely are moving towards kind of multi-format delivery. And we envision that in the future we may have another tier of service where we have like super high quality, HD quality almost downloads. That might take a little longer, but there's probably a segment of the market that's going to want them. How do you see uh, this sort of the small crop of this uh, smaller niche uh, video distribution companies such as yourself, will they, is there this opportunity now to kind of create well, their own? I will say it's not easy. We have a terrific team of developers. They worked for months to develop even the first version of the platform. As I say, Tatum is a very experienced leader of this team. I have a lot of experience with video infrastructure, so it's not for everyone. But, you know, we fundamentally consider ourselves to be a media company. Now, out of our 10 people at Diversion Media, five of them are developers, you know? So we are a very technologically focused media company. But having gone from SonicNet, which was 10 people in a loft in Tribeca, to MTV iGroup, where I managed 500 people around the world, and now going back to 10, you know, technology is really being rapid adopters and understanding the technology and what it can do quickly is the only thing that lets a little guy compete against the big guys, you know? So it doesn't matter fundamentally whether you're using someone else's platform. I mean, if you're a blogger using WordPress, just fine. You don't need to go create your own blogging platform. And there are increasingly going to be more people that are going to give even small independent publishers a platform to use. But if you can create your own, especially if you're doing multiple brands, and we kind of feel like that's definitely the best way to go. And I would think that any sort of aggressive media company uh, would want to be very technology focused. Now, my experience in big media is that isn't always the case. Sometimes there's a lot of lip service paid to it, but when push comes to shove, people feel like, hey, we're not really software guys. Why should we have all these engineers around here? Let's let someone else do that. For us, the technology is kind of the key that unlocks everything else.